In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Please be seated. So I asked Selden and Jeff whether this tradition still exists at Virginia Theological Seminary, and they both said it, it does not. Uh, but when I was there, they'd wait till they already had you. Uh, they wouldn't start the whole first year semester this way, but uh, they waited till you had a semester under your belt, you'd already committed, and then they'd invite you back a week early from Christmas break for what they would uh, call, or maybe it was just the students that called it read and bleed. And I still remember uh, the grizzled retired Catholic priest who would lead this uh, five-day uh, teaching exercise on biblical reading. And every time I hear this passage from Corinthians, I hear him yelling at me, doesn't really sound like a treasure in earthen vessels to me, Ben. How do we make that come alive? And that was his point, was that if we read it fully, it's pretty powerful news that there is a treasure inside each of you. The rest is just dirt. There is a treasure inside each of you, and your purpose in life is to make that treasure shine, to make the Jesus that is alive in you come forth. It's powerful news. But we spend a lot of time on the dust part, on the clay part, on the earthen vessel or the stuff around the earthen vessel, our clothes, our, uh, our stuff, our physical fitness, our appearance. You know, what's interesting is we generally are adverse to rules. We try to limit the number of rules that anybody can exert on us, uh, but when it comes to the clay part, the earthen vessels part, we actually pay people to give us rules. Think about it. How many of you have had more success dieting uh, when you've paid somebody lots of money to tell you what you already knew, uh, to even put things in small portions for you. I mean, most of us realize uh, m that we need to eat smaller portions. We need to eat certain kind of foods more than others. We should probably stop eating at a certain hour. Uh, if, we, if we drink less, that would help as well. Uh, you know, we're very cognizant of all of these things, but there is something that comes from the discipline uh, of somebody selling us for twice as much uh, already portioned out uh, portions or telling us eat this at this hour, this at this hour, this at this hour. And we submit ourselves to that because we know that that discipline helps us to reach those goals. Uh, and when it, when it comes to exercise, we do it as well. Uh, how many of us know that when we get on a bike and go for a bike ride, that's good exercise? And when we pedal faster, uh, that burns more energy than when we pedal slower. And, uh, and if we mix it up, there's benefits to that as well. Uh, but we'll go into a gym and on a stationary bike, uh, have somebody yelling at us, hurry up, slow down, you know, telling us how fast or how slow to go. We do the same thing on treadmills, uh, you know, uh, uh, and have somebody tell us when we need to sprint, when we need to go slower. Uh, Whatever new fitness regime, we have a trainer that will come and tell us what the rules are and make sure we follow it. And it's helpful. But in that interior life, in bringing that light that is in each of us out into the world, we generally don't like to be subjected to rules. And so we're really excited that Jesus lets us off the hook. In a couple different ways, Jesus says, you know, uh, yes, there's over 600 rules about how to live, uh, but if you love your God with all your heart, mind, and soul, and your neighbor as yourself, you pretty much covered it. We're like, okay, that's good. 600 was a whole lot to follow. Uh, and then we have this commandment uh, that Jesus is saying, well, you know, it, it's okay. Uh, when there's an opportunity to heal, to take care of somebody in need, you can do work on the Sabbath. When you're hungry and somebody needs to eat, it's okay. And so we take this, and we take that line, uh, and we create this division between this camp and this camp. This camp uh, says there's absolutely no exceptions to, uh, uh, to how we keep the Sabbath. And then there's Jesus, the laid back, uh, you know, says, just love God and, and your, your neighbor and everything will be okay. And that's not really the construct. It's not fair to either side. What's going on here is somewhat between Jesus uh, and, and, and the establishment, and it has very little to do with the Sabbath. Ever since Jesus was baptized and he gathered his friends and he started his ministry in Mark, he has been confronted one time after another, and we're only in the third, second and third chapter, uh, but 
First, it was, uh, it was the fact that when he healed somebody, when he healed the man who was lowered into his house, uh, he said, your sins are forgiven, you are well. And they said, who is this? Who is this who says he can forgive sins? Only God can forgive sins. Who is this? And if he is who he says he is, what does it say about us and our authority and our power? And then second, they said, this cannot be the Son of God. If this were the Son of God, he would realize all of the dietary laws, not just around how we eat, but who we eat with, and he would know that he is eating with the scum of the earth. He would know he is eating with people who don't follow the laws faithfully, who have screwed up more times than any of us cares to remember. Uh, he would know better than to eat with them if he were really who he said he is. And then they noticed that his friends uh, are not keeping uh, uh, fast, that they're breaking fast. And he says, well, why are they breaking fast? And he says, because they realize they're in the presence of God, and this is a time for celebration. There will be times for fasting later, but this is a time for joy. And then, and then we have this story. And they're walking through the fields, uh, and they're, they're probably just fidgeting, plucking the, the tops of the wheat off the, uh, off the fields. Uh, and they say, it's, uh, it violates the Sabbath for them to be plucking the tops of the wheat off, the, uh, off their stalks. I don't think they were principally concerned, and there were exceptions already in that time uh, to that. Uh, and, and in fact, uh, the Talmud in the same time period, already said uh, that the Sabbath, keeping the Sabbath, was more for us and our needs and our ability to be faithful to God uh, than, than for God, it's God itself. Uh, the Sabbath is for us. In fact, when I took um, uh, Judaism, the rabbi, who was a conservative rabbi, talked about how his life was ordered. And he talked about all the different laws that he subjected himself to. He talked about how uh, in his house he had practically two kitchens, two sets of pots, uh, two refrigerators, uh, and that uh, they made sure this didn't mix with this and that didn't mix with that. And said there was, over the course of a day, 10,000 possible blessings uh, that he could have uh, over everything from putting his shoes on correctly uh, 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 to fluffing his pillow. Uh, there was a blessing for it. And somebody asked, you know, do you think God cares? reasonable question. And he said, do you think God cares? And he said, you know, absolutely not. And he said, well, why do you do it? He said, because several times every single hour, I attune myself to God. I attune myself to God and what God is doing in my life. And he said, I need that. I need my life attuned to God. I don't think it matters to God, but it certainly has changed my life and allowed me to be more faithful. I think that's what the Sabbath is about. I don't think Jesus wants us to disregard the Sabbath. I think Jesus is, is quite concerned that we have not necessarily kept the Sabbath very faithfully. That we have not necessarily opened up enough time in our lives for us to be still and to really contemplate that light that is inside of us, that treasure that is inside each one of us, and to make that treasure shine in the world. The Sabbath is one of the great gifts that God gave us, that God knew us well enough to say, you need time to stop, to be still. The whole creation needs time to breathe. Fields need time not to be uh, over, uh, overcropped. Um, our oxen and uh, our animals need time to rest. Those laborers that we take for granted, at that point, laborers that were forced to work need Sabbath. Those indebted need release from their debts. The world, all creation, needs time for restoration, for healing, for justice, for peace, and for that deep breath of God to wash over them. And I love you enough to create an order where you have that time. Jesus wasn't undercutting that. Jesus was just saying, there are times where the law sometimes separates us from the fruit. Sometimes that light burning in us needs to be read in the same words uh, as we read the law. That the Sabbath is not just for dotting something off and checking it off a list, but for us to truly live into that truth. That we are made with Jesus Christ burning inside of us. And that when we really take time out, 
Not time on our video games, not time on our uh, uh, glued to the television, not time uh, with one uh, uh, app open, thinking about something else, composing a list, doing our laundry, but real respite time. Real time with those that we love, time with ourselves, times with whose love we were made in the image of. When we truly take that, then we can live into that truth. There is a treasure burning bright within us that our earthen vessel is blessed to be able to carry out into the world. Sometimes it takes the same discipline we're willing to pay someone uh, to take care of that fading earthen vessel. That story of the call of Samuel. He hears the voice of God because he listens. He hears the voice of God because he trusts the instruments that God has used through history to open people's ears, the prophets that have come before him. He listens to Eli. He opens up his ears, and he's still enough to hear, and that God who speaks to all of us speaks to him, and he responds. Take some time, some Sabbath time, and summer sometimes avails us more than at other times, and truly put everything aside, because God is speaking to us, and God is burning in us, and God needs us to share that light with the world. Amen.